the young American riders, they know if this doesn't work out, there's a plan B. These young Brazilian riders that give up everything to come here, they don't have a plan B. When you come to U.S. and you have all this great opportunity to make money, of course it's gonna make your job getting better and better and better every single week. Physically for bull riding, you need to be in great shape. That's not saying that there's not gonna be injuries along the way and certain guys respond differently coming back to injuries. I got a concussion in Tulsa last weekend. Throughout the week, I've been kind of doing light exercise. I didn't get lightheaded or anything during this workout, so it was a good test for me to see if I'm ready for tonight in Houston. The situation I'm in now has changed a lot. Having a family and more responsibility, and I never want to be like, bull riding, it's not a job, it's just what I do, but the fact is, it is my job. I've always had a very large amount of pride for where I come from and my people and who I am. There's not a place that will ever replace this for me. No matter where I live, it's always home. Six teams, five countries, and the toughest Cowboys in the world. In February 2020, AT&T Stadium becomes a battleground for professional bull riding's top international prize. To don their nation's colors, riders will first have to make the team. And with coaches watching their every ride, every week, the pressure is on. This is PBR Global Cup. Who will pay the price for glory? Forty-five miles northwest of Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport lies Decatur, Texas, a small city with a population nearing 7,000. Most of PBR's Brazilian riders have found a welcome home here, having established a Brazilian community thousands of miles from their native land. The more we stay together, the more we work together, the more we buck and boot together, you know, it's better for us. When you come to U.S. here, and you have all this great opportunity to make money. You make your life better. In Brazil, you're never gonna have this opportunity. One thing Americans take for granted in this country is the young American riders, they know if this doesn't work out, there's a plan B. These young Brazilian riders that give up everything to come here, they don't have a plan B. They stick together because their friends and their culture is the same and they eat the same food and they can communicate with each other. They have created a situation where they live that they're comfortable. Lá no Brasil, a gente tem mais, tem, sempre não tem oportunidade, o outro tem, daí o outro pode ajudar a gente. E sempre tá, sempre tá essa união, essa, essa união sempre, entendeu? Sempre um ajudando o outro. Estar todo mundo junto é muito importante para nós todos os brasileiros juntos, reunidos num lugar só, porque eles acabam se tornando a nossa família também. E isso é muito importante porque a gente sente muita falta de se comunicar, de, de brincar, de ter uma interação com os nossos amigos. E isso ajuda muito, jogar futebol, viajar juntos, isso tudo facilita quando a gente está perto um do outro. É, é um sonho que eu tenho desde criança, é, vim para cá, montar aqui nos Estados Unidos. E, mas só que não é fácil. Tipo, quando a gente vem, que a gente vê que é difícil. Deixei minha família, meus pais, deixei um filho lá. Então, para mim, foi muito difícil. Mas só que é um lugar que oferece muita oportunidade. E estou aqui correndo atrás de um sonho, que é ser campeão mundial. Decatur é também o training mecca for Team Brazil's Global Cup efforts. This job to find who we gonna take to Global Cup. We have a lot of great bull rides. Gonna be tough for me, gonna be tough for Palermo, you know, because we need different styles. We need guys to make big scores. Palermo, he's, he's the guy that push everybody you now. He's the one, uh, I think any team have a coach like him because he's one of the guys he on show up in the locker room, everybody go whew. He want to make those guys ride good, and if you see him on the bucking shoot helping, he help everyone. He pull rope and push the bull and open the gate and make you really good. If you have some problem, Guilherme is going to stand up you and try to correct himself. With his presence already having a positive impact on Team Brazil's training, Guilherme Marchi sees more riders stepping up to the hot seat for Global Cup team consideration. What impressed me, Luciano and Lucas Divino, is that two is different cowboys, you know. Lucas Divino, he ride more strong 
And Luciano, he ride more loose, but he's very, very humble. Aí saber que eu não ia fazer parte da de 2019 aqui nos Estados Unidos, eu, eu fiquei um pouco chateado sim, porque se fosse, se não trouxesse os meninos do Brasil, não, que eles não tenham merecido, eles montaram bem lá, sim, merecia, mas por eles ter mudado o jeito, eu acabei ficando de fora. Mas só que eu levantei minha cabeça, minha torcida continua a mesma pelos meus amigos, fiquei feliz por eles ter montado bem, ter conseguido o título, e isso me deu mais motivação de eu conseguir estar dar mais o meu melhor, para que eu possa participar, eu tenho fé que eu vou terminar no ano bom aí, e você escalado para a Copa do Mundo 2020. Lucas Divino, right now he he has little problem. The balls go away from his hand. If the ball balls go on his way, you know, to the right, he cover é any ball. He right so strong. Eu acho que nós tinha que ter o Guilherme que a vida inteira, né? <risos> acho que não podia voltar pro Brasil não. Acho que o lugar dele era aqui junto com a gente ali. Isso é bom demais, moço. A gente se sente confortável. Ah, quando o Guilherme chega perto da gente, que a gente já vai montar num tour ali, a gente já lembra do competidor que ele é. E, e então a gente pega mais aquela força, aquele incentivo, ainda mais ele gritando ali. Pega, vai, solta o corpo, não desiste não, aquece o coração, monta com garra, monta firme, vai dar certo. Você é um bom competidor, você é um bom peão. We have a plan time for build the, the team, you gonna show me how good you are on the time for be there you know you need to work yourself show us you deserve to be there Three and a half hours southeast of Team Brazil's training grounds lies College Station, Texas, home to Team USA Eagles veteran and current prospect Cody Teal. For Teal, Global Cup competition has affected home life in a very big way. Evelyn, she's a lot more outgoing than I am. Um, I'm kind of more the one to, I don't really speak unless spoken to, you know, and I can carry on conversation, but I have to be approached. She's more outgoing, I would say, <laughs> even though she's just one and can't really complete sentences or even words. But from what I'm gathering, her personality is going toward that direction. Really just loves interacting with people and uh, it's always laughing, seems like. In Edmonton at the Global Cup, I was sitting with Silvano's wife, Evelyn. And I told Cody that after the event that I was sitting with Evelyn and he was like, oh, I love that name. And I said, me too, if we ever have a girl, that's what I want to name her. And so that's when we decided. I don't think Cody knew how attached he was going to be until now. I mean, he doesn't want to leave or he wants her to come. He was going to the event in Allen last weekend and he went to leave and she just had a complete meltdown and I think he felt so bad and he almost didn't go. And I was like, no, 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 it's okay. <laughs> I get in trouble, I do more playing when I come in here than making her go to sleep. Well, being on the PBR, you know, at the weekend events, we might be gone one or two nights. Quick turnaround, you know, it's not too bad, but still, that short amount of time, you feel like you're missing a lot, but it's also motivating, having that support system and knowing you, I'm coming home to that, you know, it's a, it definitely, like, even during the week, it keeps me working hard and, and motivated, and just because, like I said, I'm, I'm able to do something that I love to do to provide for them. With his daily priorities shifted to supporting the people he loves, the pressure of PBR competition holds more weight than ever on Cody Teal's shoulders. Pressure amplified by the stage of Global Cup and team selection. Yeah, as, as crazy as it is, all the places that we do go from, you know, New York to LA, going to Arlington, Texas at the AT&T Stadium, that's like the coolest event for me to get to go to. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to meet Cody Teal? Being the Global Cup too last year just added the whole like energy of the event and being in that building, it's just really cool. It's by far my favorite place to ride. I feel pressured. I want to be a part of it so bad after being a part of it in the past. I know I'd sure hate not being on the team, just knowing the feeling you get of it. So, I mean, it's on my mind, you know, how you perform throughout the year is kind of what leading up to the Global Cup. They know Justin and if JW is assistant coach again, they watch and, and you know, they see things. So it matters to me because because I want to be a part of that team. He kind of is like, doesn't show emotion. And like a lot of times, you know, if he bucks off or something doesn't go right, 
just by his body language, I'll tell someone, oh no, he's so mad. And they're like, he doesn't look mad, but I know that that's what that means. I just enjoy riding bulls strictly for like the challenge of it and like, like I might get dusted one weekend in a championship round, but I enjoy knowing I can come back and try that again. It's not really so much about the glory or all the hype and everything around it, but that's what comes with winning. So like, you gotta embrace that, I know that, but for me, I like it pretty low key and I don't really care for the spotlight, I guess. Low profile is kind of my vibe. Cody Teal's past successes in the PBR helped lay the groundwork for his life at home. With a focus on growing that foundation, every PBR event holds the potential to provide for his family's future, a fact that also stresses sacrifice and support from the entire family. The situation I'm in now has changed a lot. Having a family and more responsibility, and I never want to be like, bull runs, it's not a job, it's just what I do, but the fact is it is my job, and it is how I support my family and, you know, take care of them. And, and I treat it that way. I think a lot of people don't want to admit like it's their job because then it doesn't make it fun or whatever, but I do enjoy it. The fact is I have a job that I love to do. I like, love waking up every morning working to, to be better at my job. It's changed that mindset for me, having Evelyn and being able to provide for her in a way that I really love doing it. That's the biggest way it's changed my mindset. When I'm gone, Caitlin is taking care of Evelyn and then all the animals we have and just keeping the house rolling. And you know, I'm very appreciative of her and everything she does. You know, definitely couldn't have all this if didn't have that support at home from her. Circle. Cody Teal's efforts to maintain balance have been successful on all fronts to date. And for USA Eagles coach Justin McBride, Teal's riding continues to impress. Teal's a guy I love. Uh, I mean, in in a Global Cup situation, he's like that tight end that can do everything, you know, and you never hear him complain. You never once hear a complaint out of him. Everybody loves him. Everybody knows that you can put him on whatever bull, and he's going to do whatever it takes to get the job done. Having just left Texas to return to his childhood home in Utah, Team USA Wolves rider Keyshawn Whitehorse has his sights set on two things, reconnecting with native pride and making another Global Cup roster. I've always had a very large amount of pride for where I come from and my people and who I am. Living back in Texas, everything is so based in inside AC, you know, something man-made, you know, versus here. When I learned how to train, it was all outside for the most part, being able to run these hills, carry rocks, throw rocks for strength training and stuff. And the weather being a part of how to train your mental fortitude rather than being in an area where the condition is perfect every single time, every single day. Pretty much it's where I grew up, whole area. There's not a place that will ever replace this for me. Uh, no matter where I live, it's always home. But I um, plan on building an arena, little arena, bucking bulls, just have a few, just for kind of more of a private session, nothing too big, and have some more horses again, just try to make sure that, kind of get everything back and some from when I was growing up. Because this is home for me, and this is what I'm used to. Here is the old barrel I used to practice on when I first started learning how to ride. This is how I used to try to ride to stay on, because this thing belly rolls. There wasn't much, uh, much te technique involved except for base position for, for riding this thing. That's all my dad knew. That's all the way I grew up. Bell underneath is my dad's old bell that he used to use on his rope. My dad used to bucket, just throw anything at me. And it wasn't no form, no technique. It was all just purely just trying to stay on as long as I could. A lot of stories to be told on this barrel. There used to be a bunch of blankets on here that was taped on. My dad would stand right here, and uh, he'd put his foot right on the front of this barrel. And in time, he'd push like this with his leg. That's the kick, because I would be facing him. And any time, it would come back with some kind of, with offset weight, and it would rear up, and he would push up like this as well. He would always tell me, base position, base position. So he'd be right here, and I'd be facing him, and he'd grab my hand right here, base position base position. So meaning just every time, every time the bull goes up in the front end, you're right here. Not many things matter out here. Moving back here to Utah just kind of is helping me grow my traditional ways again. 
Keyshawn's renewed focus on connecting with his roots aims to rectify inconsistent riding performances he's had of late. This push to build a healthy mental state is what the young rider ultimately hopes will impress coach Ted Noose and land him a spot on Team USA Wolves for 2020. I've always put in a lot of physical training into it and a lot of uh, spirituality into my career and who I am. So the mentality side of things is something to a certain point I hadn't worked on as much up until last year. I knew of Ted as a bull rider. I didn't know him personally. I have a DVD with some of his rides and I'd watch him. And I knew he rode very well, you know, being a world champ and all, you have to ride very well. But uh, being able to talk to him and really see how his mind works and stuff, I, I like him as a coach. He's there, he's attentive, he's trying to make sure that you're doing everything you possibly can and he's making sure he's doing everything he possibly can to make sure that you're firing on all cylinders. If there's something that you need to do when you're riding, he'll let you know. So having a coach like that to kind of get you out of your shell and trying to figure out you as a person, not just as a rider, is going to help us and lead us to victory this coming Global Cup. For us being a young team, there's still a lot of experiences for us younger guys to go through. Yeah, we know how to ride bulls, but that's there's situations that, we, as of riders, we haven't gotten got put in yet. Having Ted there to like guide us through that way, to be that attentive, really helps you out and helps you put your mind in a state where it's ready to grow from it. Pistol, you got anything you need to say? Yeah. Do you like going to the bull ridings? Yes. Physical fitness is key for riders looking to make Troy Dunn's Team Australia for 2020. In Adamstown, New South Wales, Australia, the Cowboys from Down Under are trying to prove they have what it takes. I try and stress fitness. If one guy's really doing a lot of hard yards and you know one of the other guys aren't, aren't pulling their weight, it's going to show up. The strength and conditioning would that we're going to set them up with their programs um, is solely based on the, the demands of the sport. So training for similar movements that they're going to encounter when they're, when they're riding. Will was with us in Sydney um, and he done a bit with us before Dallas in February as well. He knows what muscles you use and, and what you, how strong you need to be and for how long you need to be intense. You've got to start them for eight seconds, but you got to have your heart racing for a longer and, and your body's got to stay strong the whole time. So, and he knows all that and trains that to us. And he used to ride bulls, so he knows what we've got to do. The stronger you are and the, and the fitter you are, sometimes you've got to get on four bulls at, in, in the short space of time. If you get a re-ride in a few rounds, um, you've got to be ready for that, and this is all part of it. So this is going to help over our overall strength and uh, conditioning and just improve us as, a, as athletes. I rode for 20 years and um, I've really put a lot of research into the sport of late. Um, really sort of looking into the movements that they make when they ride and also the, you know, the force that the bull puts on them, the injuries so we can prevent a lot of injuries. A few months ago in Rockhampton I tore some li uh, ligaments in my left knee. I've come back, got on some practice bulls that felt great. I'm 100% confident in that left knee. Uh, the right knee, however, when I was at practice, a lot of pain shot through that knee. Now uh, I've got to get an MRI on the knee and, and go from there. I've already missed a few events. Not too sure how my, the, rest, the rest of the season's going to go. You get a lot of groin, groin injuries, knee injuries, shoulder, well, it's endless. You know, they're getting them back on the ball. So um, I think with a well-structured strength program, it can prevent a lot of these injuries um, occurring. Um, and also, you know, pro prolong their career and, um, yeah, help them perform better. The guys that are there that I have a lot of faith in that, that I think should be there, they, they won't have to perform probably as well as the younger guys because the, the younger guys have to prove that, that they can step up. Our Global Cup's a little bit like the Olympics for us. Um, Yes, yeah, a very special event to be a part of and it's just really a huge honour to represent your country, putting it all out there, knowing that you rode your best and also leading up to the event, um, doing all this stuff, uh, making sure that you're going in fully confident, that's the least you can do for, you, for yourself and your home country.
You've got to put in everything you've got, because if you don't, you're letting a lot of people down. Back in Houston, Texas, Cooper Davis and a group of Team USA prospects find themselves undergoing a less traditional form of staying fit. Physically for bull riding, you need to be in great shape. That's not saying that there's not going to be injuries along the way that come up and guys have to come back from them. And, and, and certain guys respond differently coming back to injuries. I got a concussion in Tulsa last weekend. Throughout the week, I've been kind of doing light exercise. This is uh, my sister-in-law's studio, Be Liguri Fitness. It's just kind of a cool opportunity to get some of the guys out to do a little bit different form of exercise that we're not all used to. The most important thing to remember is you are working on a moving surface. I got a, a group of guys together that really enjoy working out. Right table in your right hand, right elbow up. A lot of us were used to just strictly, you know, free weights, things like this. This is a chance to actually take our core and use every part of our body into one exercise. I think right now we're all probably going to be sore tonight. This right here, it's kind of more fitting to what our, our body needs as far as an athlete goes. We're uh, really hard on our bodies, and for this workout right here, it helps us uh, stretch, helps us be more durable. Uh, it's better in every aspect. Now, nothing moves, just pull the forearms back. Coming into Houston, I wanted to come and, uh, you know, kind of test to make sure that I was good. Didn't get lightheaded or anything during this workout, so uh, it was a good test for me to see if I'm ready for tonight in Houston. Anytime you can get a group of guys together that are potentially going to be on your team, it's going to help that team building aspect and whenever you get together you're going to want to push each other that much harder because something like this you can kind of see everybody's limits and kind of push them to that next level. It's definitely going to help us as far as the team goes in the Global Cup. Great job. Thank you guys so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Next time on Price for Glory, a group of young hopefuls try to make a name for themselves in the Music City. Marco Bush impressed me yesterday, you know, he rode so strong, he put good sport there. I feel like my work during the year makes sense, you know, make me be where I want to be. Dalton has something that can't be taught. The sky is the limit for Dalton Castle. Last few months of my life, it's been changed a lot, but also for the good, it's been really humbling. Everything being thrown at you, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. And Team Mexico's training camp at the Jerome Davis Rodeo Ranch begins. We want these guys to get together, and at the end of the day, be a team. Take that team, and when it's time to step up for the team, make it happen. If you don't take advantage of an opportunity like this, you know, a guy like him, you know, being American and he's willing to help and, and, and to coach the team, you know, it's huge. Jerome has a lot to offer. Of course, he's really smart. He looks at videos and critiques us up really well. He really relates to us, honestly, because we are the underdogs. You give me some guys that's got some try and some want to, we can go places, and that's what we got. And that's, I think that's the bonus.